Can Nightwing and the rest of the Titans team save Wally West the Flash from an uncertain death and the Borneo Forest from complete destruction? Well, let's hop into the pages of Titans issue number five, the prelude to the brand new Beast World event and find out what happens next together, shall we? So then, picking up directly from where the last issue left off, Beast Boy had led a team of Titans into the Borneo Forest to try and rebuild it after it was mysteriously burnt down by a Tamaranian laser. It would seem that shadowy forces have an invested interest in the continued destruction of the Borneo Borneo Forest and the people who live there because they sent the Demolition Team forgotten DC comic book villains. The team had managed to make short work of these D-listers, but poor Beast Boy is getting angrier and angrier. He just doesn't understand how people could hurt the Earth while actively living on it. And it seems that this anger and righteous indignation is running so deep into him, it's actually affecting his shape-shifting abilities. He basically turns into a were-beast boy for a minute. Now, while this is going on, Wally West the Flash is out in space at the Titan's Vault, the place that they keep all of the important weapons of mass destruction that they take off supervillains, including Mr. Twister's staff, and even a Quarian super bomb. The idea is they need to keep Wally as safe as humanly possible because, well, he's set to die any minute now, shot dead by a mystery assailant. Of course, we know the assailant is actually none other than his wife, who was actually infected by some sort of strange alien parasite, passed on to her by an Aqualad who is also seemingly having his behavior manipulated at the moment. Of course, Dick being as smart as he is, figure that the only person who could ever have killed the Flash is someone who could only possibly have gotten as close to her as Linda did. It's because of that he set up this whole trap at the vault. A brainwashed Linda tries to activate the Cordian bomb only for Nightwing to have a very fun moment of, oh come on, you think we would actually arm all of these weapons? Nah, they're mostly just for show. It's here too that Nightwing really gets the opportunity to put on his detective hat for a second. It seems that this weird alien parasite has the very same markings that they saw on the rock that Brother Eternity, and the new Church of Blood had been keeping in their facility, throw in the fact that Aqualad isn't acting like himself recently, and well, it doesn't take a genius to put together what's going on here. Now back over with Beast Boy and the rest of the team, they decide that they won't be able to reforest all of Borneo on their own. Because of that, they decide to call in a ringer, the new Swamp Thing, Levi, who admittedly I don't know that much about. Now, if you've followed Tom Taylor's work for any amount of time, you've probably figured out by now that a lot of his stories actually have really good, really positive ecological messages, and this one is no different. As the new Swamp Thing says in what ends up being a very educational speech, it's not just enough to plant trees to try and bring back life to a dead area like this one. You need all the right elements working in your favor, wind, rain, proper sunlight, and even insect life to be able to pollinate the area. Luckily, this is where the Titans come on in. Raven is able to open up a portal to a dimension of wind and rain, and because Starfire is very literally ultraviolet, that she's just able to burn herself super hot to where and she basically becomes a small sun. Doing things this way allows our heroes to breathe fresh life into this once dead force, but it's Beast Boy who ends up doing the really hard work. He basically transforms and becomes all the different insect life that this place needs to really get going. Here's the thing though, as they're sure to mention, splitting his mind into all these different swarms of very small insects is kind of dangerous for Beast Boy because if even just one of those bugs dies, and indeed they do because because bugs are fragile and have very short lifespans, Beast Boy ends up losing a little bit of himself, and that's certainly not good for him. No doubt this revelation is going to be very, very important in the upcoming Beast World event. Nightwing stops by to check on the rest of his team and their progress, and there's much reason for celebrating. The Flash has been saved, the Borneo Forest is growing green again, and they finally know that Brother Eternity is indeed not on the level at all. But of course, that still begs the question, what exactly is Brother Eternity after right now? Well, we discover that he's actually working for another bigger, much more evil, much more mysterious foe. But more importantly than that, it's in this issue we learn what Brother Eternity truly is. Most people, myself included, just assumed that he was Brother Blood with a different face. But in reality, it turns out Brother Eternity is actually a secret Tamaranian. Yeah, that's right, one of Starfire's people, which actually explains the whole laser plot from before, doesn't it? And it's on that shocking revelation right there, the comic comes to a close. And so that was Titans issue number five, everybody, and I thought this story did a nice job of wrapping up this first story arc, while also laying the groundwork for this next big crossover event without being too distracting. In fact, I'm actually kind of excited now, more than I was before. I like the idea that Beast Boy and his powers are going to be the impetus behind a big event. I also like the idea that the Titans haven't even reassembled for that long, and they're already going to have to hold down a big world save 
saving event, much like their predecessors, the Justice League, did before them. I thought the whole ecological message was really nice and really nicely woven throughout the story itself. And heck, I'm even more interested in Brother Eternity now that I know he's not just a regular cult leader, but actually an evil Tamaranian. It actually puts a whole new spin on everything he's been saying up until now about how Earth is doomed and humanity needs to look elsewhere to the stars. Oh, you mean the place you're already from? How about that? Overall, I feel comfortable enough giving this one a very positive 8.5 out of 10. This is good stuff, and I'll be interested to see what this series looks like after the whole big event is done, and who else might be getting the spotlight next. Hey there, everyone. It's your pal, Kate Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers. A lot of cool stuff offering up there. Exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind-the-scenes concept art for Capes and Quest. That's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and, you know, help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw. So I want to thank you all, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.